Well, let's <laughs> see what the Let's, as we come to the end, let's look at your record in health. You said all Scottish patients, 100%, mm -hmm. should start receiving treatment within 12 weeks. Did you wrote that guarantee into law when you were health secretary, yeah. longest serving health secretary? What proportion of patients are getting treatment within uh, 12 we're, weeks? We're not meeting that, what, what that it? target. It's below, it's the 80 percent um, or so, it should be 95%. No, 72%. Um, but we're not meeting that target, we're not meeting... Well, it's, you like, hit 72. Indeed, it is not good enough, but all health services are undergoing pressure from increased demand. Scotland is no different there. What is different in Scotland is the focus we are bringing now to uh, addressing these issues. So if you take the Audit Scotland report that was just published uh, a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, their annual report on performance of the NHS, they say that on seven out of the eight key waiting times targets, including uh, that one, there are now more people been seeing within yeah. those targets than was the case in but the year before. But it also said that out of these eight targets, you're only hitting two of them. Uh, absolutely. Uh, two out of eight. Uh, absolutely. And, and can I just say, you made this 100% target a legal guarantee. I mean, have you or the health ministers have been charged with breaking the law? Uh, it's not a criminal uh, law, but... No, but it's a civil offence. But it, but it sets out the steps but that health boards have the to take. Guarantee. We have set out... We've, we've got an £850 million pounds waiting time improvement plan underway. The Audit Scotland report, which uh, you've so, quoted to me so, as well, more patients are being seen within these you, targets now than in well, the year before. What's the point of a legal guarantee, then? It means nothing, does it? Well, there's 1.8 million people since that came into uh, operation that have been seen within that target... That's would not necessarily have been well, sure, but, but 1.8 million people have benefited from that. That is you the point of having those kind of targets. Like you, are, you are way behind. I, I'm not denying. I, I'm not denying time. that. All health services have these challenges. Um, we are addressing these challenges. <laughs> In many of these targets, we uh, A and E, for example, we are way ahead of the performance of health services in other parts of the UK. Well, do you think it's a, a the, the, it's a comfort to no, someone I, well, in Glasgow that they're not having to wait no, as long for what, somebody in Grimsby? No, 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 I don't. What I'm saying, I regularly get challenged by Conservatives and Labour in the Scottish Parliament saying if only we were in power, it would be so much better. I don't think it's unreasonable to say, yes, we have challenges in Scotland, but we are dealing with these challenges more effectively well, you than these other them, parts of the UK. But as I look, case. only two of your eight waiting time targets being hit. You've been in for a long while. You haven't hit the A&E target since 2017. The two-month cancer car target you haven't hit since 2013. Children are dying in a new Glasgow hospital because the water's contaminated, oh, perhaps we... by pigeon droppings. A new multi-million pound Edinburgh hospital, should have opened in 2012, is still unfit to open. You can't even get the ventilation system to work. You've got the worst drug addiction problem in Europe, but you cut drug treatment budgets by 15 million. You clung on to your last health minister. You're under pressure now to sack her successor. I mean, you've called for legislation to protect the NHS from Donald Trump. Maybe the NHS needs legislation to protect it from Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, well, obviously, I don't think that's the case because we are focused on addressing. You've put forward a number of legitimate issues there that are all challenges. It's quite a um, for us, well, look, but these issues. I mean, if you take waiting times, we have the Audit Scotland report saying that we are seeing more patients within these targets because the investment we're putting in is having that effect. So we are having uh, improvements and delivering improvements. There have been issues with the construction of the Sick Kids Hospital in Edinburgh with a, a ventilation system. We are putting that right. Uh, that is going to be it's a nine public, years late and it's still uh, not open. We, there have been construction difficulties. I don't uh, deny that at all. There is going to be a full public inquiry into the reasons around that on drugs. Uh, we have an issue. Some of the reasons for that go back a long time. We have a task force that is looking uh, at the solutions we have to take forward there. We have increased the investment in drug treatment services. So health services everywhere have challenges. We are not immune from that. But I uh, believe that we are doing the things that are required to fix those challenges and to make sure that we have the health service that people expect. And patient satisfaction ratings for NHS Scotland remain extremely high. They're high in England take... too. Well, look, so but on many of these things you're talking difference. about... What we are doing in Scotland is way beyond what any other part of the UK is okay. doing. First Minister, thank you, thank you for that. This has been the first in a series of leaders' interviews during this general election. Tomorrow night, it's Jeremy Corbyn at the earlier time of 7pm on BBC One.